Hello, friends and family. I am Letitia, the Crafty Curator, and it has been a while. It has been almost a year. Almost a year since I've recorded a video, at least nine months. A lot has happened since then, no? Um, but we're going to jump back into this as if we've never left. We are old friends, so... Um, yeah, no explanations needed. I'm glad to be back. Um, I've been active on Instagram, active on Facebook, so I've definitely um, been around and I just haven't been recording um, for so many reasons um, that I'm sure we can all understand and empathize with. Um, but the good news is I am back um, and I am back not only with one video, but... <sighs> Uh, the promise of a series of videos. Um, and I'll tell you why. I'll just twist the camera here a bit. I have some things to share. Yeah, you see how that cube is empty? Yeah, I have some things to share. And as you can tell, um, I'm in a new craft space. Um, one of the things that's happened in the past nine months is the purchase of a home. And with that came a craft room, a much needed craft room. Um, that everybody in my household is thankful that I have. Um, and we'll leave that there. But yeah, I am filming from my craft room now. And in that space that I just shared, um, I have all of my whips, all of my patterns. Um, there might be a few items in the closet. Over here is my yarn wall. All of that is yarn. Um, so things are pretty, pretty much organized for once in my adult crafting life. Um, but one of the reasons why I wanted to get back into recording was number one, I just miss sharing my stuff with you guys. Um, coming up in October will be seven years, um, seven years that I have haphazardly and inconsistently been sharing my crafty life with all of you. Um, and that's no small feat. Inconsistent as it may have been, it has become part of my life. Um, and I've truly enjoyed having um, this community to share the, the, you know, my crafts and my knitting or my crocheting, but mostly my stitching with over the past um, several years. It's It's been a true joy um, and I have missed it. So one of the reasons why I knew it was time to come back was because I don't know what's in here. Um, I know what's in here, but I don't know where anything is. And I have a lot, a lot of projects, a lot of whips, a lot of stash. And I don't know what I have. I am guilty of being that person that has purchased the same pattern twice, um, that has purchased the same thread twice. We've all done it, right? Um, well, a lot of us have. I won't say we all have. But... I need to know what's in there. And one of the things that we all love is a whip parade, right? If I took the time to just sit here and go through this all in one sitting, we would be here forever. It, it would probably be a six or seven hour episode, um, which is too long even for me. You know, I love a long and juicy episode. Um, floss tube episode. But what I've decided to do was go through it bin by bin. Um, and from there, I will have that record of what's in bin number one, bin number two, and I'll be able to take inventory of all the crap that I've acquired, um, since you guys have transformed me. I used to be a one whip girl, two tops. Thanks. A lot has changed over the past seven years. I'm not that girl anymore. That's all I have to say. N nowhere near that girl anymore. Um, but I need to know what's in there. And something tells me if you are my people, and I know you like I think I know you, you want to know what's in there too. So that's the whole um, motivation for coming back into Floss Tube, sharing what I've been working on. Um, I've been doing a lot of monogamous stitching over the past year. Uh, and maybe not monogamous stitching, maybe that's being a, a bit too generous. But I have been doing a lot of um, what do they call it now? Safs, starts and finishes. 
and I'm going to show you one today. Um, I have a couple of finished object objects to share with you. One is a fully finished object. The second is a finished object. Um, I have about three or four whips that I want to share with you, and then we're going to dive into what's in that first drawer. Um, but first and foremost, I just want to say I hope everybody is doing well mentally, physically, emotionally. Um, the, the last, I'm just going to round it up and say a year. The last year has been um, just as, as devastating for me as it has been for many of you. There were a lot of positive things that happened in 2020. Um, so many things to be grateful for um, individually, professionally, as a family. Um, everybody, there's a lot that we all have to be grateful for. Um, but as far as dealing with some of the things that we have um, had to endure with this um, pandemic, what we have witnessed, um, the divides, it's been hard. Um, and if I were to say that had nothing to do with my absence, I would be lying. Um, I think that it had taken a lot of what I've seen, a lot of what I have experienced, a lot of what I have witnessed, um, a lot of what I've had to face as, as our truth, um, has had an impact on me and on my spirit. And sometimes you have to, you have to learn how to be still and how, um, just to be still so you can retain um, the essence of who you intend to be in this world. And that's what I've been doing. Um, but as far as health goes, everybody has been healthy. Um, we have grown closer as a family. We have, everything's been, been good. I have zero complaints. Um, I think if anything, um, my spirit has been damaged, um, but I am holding on to it um, with as much grace as possible. I think that that's what we're all trying to do. Um, it's just trying to navigate through everything that we're experiencing on all so many different levels um, with as much grace as we possibly can um, as we navigate through this new normal. Um, but that said, it's time. It's time to come back into um, a sense of normalcy. It's time to continue to do what I love and what makes me happy. And part of that is sharing my crafting with all of you. Um, yeah. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to jump back in like we haven't skipped a beat. I'm going to show you what I've been working on, not necessarily for the past eight months, um, because a lot of that is already cubed up. And honestly, like for example, Blue Moroccan Lace, she's in there somewhere. No idea where she is. But once we get through this, um, what are we gonna call this? A Whip Parade mini series? Once we get through this Whip Parade mini series, I'll be able to find her like that. I'll know exactly where she is. Um, so thank you all for going on this ride with me and helping me to get organized and get my stuff together. So jumping in, um, we're going to start with finished objects. Um, and I stumbled over that because like I, I was about to say fully finished objects, all of them are not fully finished. So the first one I'll start with, um, if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen her, you followed my journey with her. I pretty much started her, um, when I moved in, when we moved in here, um, we moved in here in right around my birthday. So that was um, late June. I started her on July 2nd and finished her. I don't know why I'm thinking about it when my notes are right there. Um, started her on July 2nd, finished her on August 18th. So this one I pretty much stitched straight through, start to finish. And this is the dancer. Um... I will link her below, but she is simply called The Dancer. And of course, I don't remember who put her out, but she was on Etsy. And I saw her, I got this pattern a long time ago, long time ago. 
and I don't recall exactly what it is that motivated me to pull her out and stitch on her, but I just started, I think when I started, I had just the tiniest bit of her head done. Um, you might as well say I, I, I didn't even start it. It was that small an amount. Um, I started her on July 2nd and I just kept stitching. And one of the things that I loved about her was her energy. Um, I could feel her movement, uh, the colors, the bright colors, but I've named her Pearl and I called her Pearl after Pearl Primus, who was an African-American dancer who basically introduced um, African dance into um, how do I want to say this? She was one of the people who introduced the art of African dance to American dance, if that makes sense. Um, she's one of the people that brought it to the forefront and made it recognized as a um, dance theory in and of it in and of itself. And Pearl Primus, um, I'll post some pictures here. You can see from looking um, at those pictures how this piece inspired me um, to think of her and name her Pearl. Um, and I'm waiting for the frame to arrive. It's a beautiful dark cherry wood frame, um, very simple frame. But I'm waiting for the frame to arrive so she can be hung out in the main area um, of the home. She'll be on the walls. Not necessarily just in the craft room. So, yeah. Really enjoyed stitching on her. Um, the middle of this skirt, she's full coverage. There's no open. It looks like there's op the where the stitching is. I probably could have kept it open, but this is all full coverage stitching. That skirt was a beast. It was a beast. But... Loved every second of it. And it almost looks like there's eyelets or flowers. Yeah, those are all stitches. There's the back for anybody that's interested in those shenanigans. But yeah, that's Pearl. So finished her waiting on the frame and I'll be framing her um, myself. Once that comes in, I ordered the frame from um, pictureframes.com. Um, that's that. The second object I have to show you is a fully finished object. Um, up until five minutes ago, it was hanging right there. That sign, by the way, where it says crafty, it actually says crafty curator, but curator fell. So it just says crafty. So I have to put this stuff back up to, nobody cares about that. I don't know. Anyway, up until five minutes ago, this bad boy was hanging on the wall. And this is Tribal Monkey, our beloved Tribal Monkey. He was finished in May of 2020 and I framed him in this home. So it took a while to frame him. I had the frame for a long time, um, but while we were packing, I wasn't trying to go through all that. So I brought um, the boxed frame along with us and sat here on the floor and framed him up. Um, this is also from pictureframes.com, the frame, the mat, um, I thought this was non-glare, but maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Probably not. Um, but yeah, that's him all framed up. I signed him at the bottom there. 20 LB 2020. So I have to remember to sign Pearl because I haven't signed her yet. And I always forget. Um, but that's Tribal Monkey. And I'm so proud of him. Absolutely love him. Um, I want to say it was, is it Mamala? 
somebody else is stitching Tribal Monkey and it's coming along so beautifully. Um, and it's so much fun to watch. I think it's Momola that's stitching Tribal Monkey on Instagram. She's showing her, her progress on Instagram. It makes me so happy to, to watch someone else stitching him and knowing that they're enjoying every stitch as much as I did. This is one of my absolute favorites next to the Embrace. Um, because of the colors, because of everything, the design, it's it was just a fabulous piece. Um, and I had a giveaway on this pattern where I gave away the pattern and the leftover um, threads, I believe, as well as the DMC conversion. Maybe. I don't know if I went that far. I might have. Um, no, I sent my leftover threads so they can match up to DMC. That's probably what I did. Um, so Cornelius, the original pattern, has found a wonderful home in the UK. Um, and this is my Cornelius. All done. So that's all that I have for finished objects for now. Um, so next we'll go into whips. So whips. I might as well start with what I've been working on all month. It is Black History Month. Um, I'm also participating in the Black History 365 Sal representation matters sal and diversity and inclusion sal and this piece fits into all three of them um so this piece that i've been working on i started on um december 26th as part of the ph harriet tubman sal um along with several other stitchers and i picked her back up this month and decided i was going to work on her um, throughout February, um, in honor of Black History Month, um, and I'm doing a lot of talking, I might as well show you. And this is Harriet Tubman. So I got a new frame. This is one of those frames where you baste it at the top. I love this frame. This is a case creation frame, and I've never had the ones where you actually had to baste it at the top. I absolutely love it. Um, but this is where we are now. You can see Harriet is starting to come through. You can see her shadow. She's rolled up a little bit at the bottom, but her name is done. Her dates of life and death are completed. That white or that cream acre, whatever, it's the wrong color. Um, the background in there is the wrong color. It's not supposed to be that color. Uh... I had to restitch that border on Harriet Tubman on her picture, literally four times. Um, and it was still wrong. And I only fixed it once I started once I started stitching her portrait. And then I was able to find my find my mistake. You can see a little bit of chronic in there. It's been a long time since I did this, so forgive me. You can see the chronic in there and her name and the flower petal surrounding her dates, little accent outside the picture. Yeah, that's Harriet Tubman. Do you guys know about these little magnet things? I discovered, I didn't discover them. I think I saw them, Pam had them. Pam from Pam and Steph, just keep stitching. I think Pam had them. And then somebody posted in one of the Facebook groups, Give you one last look at Harriet there. Somebody posted in one of their fa the Facebook groups, they were talking about their favorite new thing and these little magnetic cable ties, which kind of took the place of the peels that we used to use to hold the fabric. These things are amazing at holding excess fabric around a Q-snap or a hoop because they're stretchy and they're magnetic while the peels, they're a little bit limited in how much they can grip in that opening as it grips around the hoop, the hoop or the Q-snap. These are fantastic for that. Um, so that's probably one of the best new stitchy things that I've learned about this year. Um, but they're, they're magnets. So when, let me put this down. They're magnets and they're stretchy. 
So this stretches around your hoop and then they got a, has a nice little grip. And then they hold their your fabric like that. They hold your fabric all in there. Really great. And then as you can see on frames like mine, they also hold the fabric kind of taut um, where it was a little bit loose before. I don't know, but that those things are amazing. So I will link that below as well. Um, the link to Amazon and very affordable. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the next whip that I have is my flying high sampler. Um, and I'm showing this only because I work on it intermittently. Um, I keep it near my nightstand in the bedroom. So I like work on it. Oh good. There's those little things on here. So you can see what I was talking about. Um, I work on it like in the evening sometimes. Um, but, um, what was I saying? You ever, does that ever happen to you You're in the midst of talking and completely forgot what you're talking? Oh yeah. So this isn't, um, a normal, this isn't a normal whip. It's just one that I work on, um, intermittently at nighttime. Um, but I will insert a picture of it here. And this is where I am on it. So this is on 36 counts. No, it's on 40 count Newcastle. It's an XJU fabric. You see how it's holding all the, see how these things are holding? Yeah, pretty great. Um, it's an XJU fabric. 40 count Newcastle. I don't remember the, the name of the colorway. Um, and I'm stitching this one over two using Splendor silks. Splendor 12 ply silks. Um, it's like Sam 822. And this is what it looks like. And I have a lot of it. Um, this is a very affordable silk in comparison to some of the others that we've seen. This is extremely affordable and it's a 12 ply. So if you're using one strand at a time, or even if you're using two, it'll go a long way because it's a 12 ply as opposed to a six ply. So it's pretty good. And it's cheaper than most six plies and you get a lot more as far as yardage goes. Um, so that is where I am with that. And this is just something I'm just kind of plugging away at no real end game in sight um the next one is one that I started recently I started this on December 5th 2020 yeah I started it on December 5th 2020 and I actually this is the first year in a very long time that I did not have a new year, new start. Um, but I did pick this up on January 1st. I had very little done, just a, a little corner of a start. This is extremely wrinkly, so, cause I didn't iron anything. Um, I just had a corner of a start and I was like, okay, I'll work on this and consider this my new year, new start. Um, because I didn't have a lot done. And this is Ottoman Tiles by Vivian Powers. Look at that. And I'll insert a picture here of what it's going to look like when it's done. Let's get up close and personal here on the tiles. Hopefully you can see it because I can't see what I'm showing you. I really, 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 really love this pattern. The design, the intricacies in the design, the colors, it's just, I absolutely love it. Um, I've gotten a couple of other patterns from her and I know that Ellen from Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour um, has gotten this pattern as well as Emily from Eclectic Possessions. Emily started it and I love watching 
her progress because she started in the middle while well, I started in the bottom left. Yeah, I started in the bottom left here. She started in the middle. So even though we're stitching on the same exact design, hers looks very different. She also changed her colors. So I really appreciate watching that progress and seeing hers come along. Um, but I put this down only to stitch on uh, my, prairie school, my Prairie Schooler sampler uh, during the week of the election. And then again, um, during the week of Martin Luther King Day and Inauguration Day. And then I put this down um, finally in February um, when I picked up Harriet Tubman. So this is where I am. This is probably a good solid month of stitching. Um, these are all full coverage. And I'm still working on this one. I call this one the sweet potato tile because it looks like a sweet potato to me. And I absolutely love this. Um, very well might pick it right back up once I finish with Harriet, which is the goal, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that um, the goal is to finish Harriet in February. We'll see how that goes because that portrait of her, in comparison to what I normally stitch, that is considered a small project for me. Let me tell you, that's that's a mini hate that um, portrait of her. It's, it's a little hate. So that's fine. Um, but it's taking me a little bit longer than I anticipated. I thought I would just knock it out in the first couple of weeks of February. And um, yeah, 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 not so much. So this one, oh, wait a minute. You know what? And I'm supposed to be, part of this is supposed to be showing the project bags that things are in um, because a lot of times I will try to identify which pro where my project is by the project bag. So I also want to take inventory of what project bag things are in. Um, so this last one, this is a Garon Toten bag as well as this one that's housing my Flying High sampler, Garon Toten bag. This was Valentine's Day bag. And that might have been from last year. It was because the one this year was beautiful, beautiful, big roses. So that's the Garon Toten bag from last year for February. This was this year's bag for November. Look at the peacocks and the white pumpkins, please. Yeah. And Shayla and EJ, I don't write on my tags either. I don't write on mine either because they're special. Not yours probably aren't bent up like mine. Um... But yeah, that's a beautiful peacock and white pumpkin bag. One of my favorites that they put out. I'm so salty that I missed out on the sale. Oh, those bags that they came out with for Black History Month. I set my alarm. I took a nap. I missed out. I missed out. Big mistake. Huge. Um... If you don't know what I'm talking about, they showed it in the Sunshine Stitchers. Both Shelia and EJ showed off their lovely bags that I um, slept through and missed my chance. <sighs> beautiful, beautiful work, Rodney. Excellent choice in fabric. Gary, I know you had a hand in the fabric choosing. Just epic. Um, speaking of epic... Gary's finish for Lady Justice. Have you seen it? Oh my gosh. Brought tears to my eyes. That, aside from what Michelle Bendy is doing for, not aside from, but right up there, neck and neck. What Michelle Bendy is doing for her, I want to call her a dreaming girl by Barbara Anna Designs. She's changed her to an indigenous woman with the bloody handprint over her mouth, paying homage to missing and murdered indigenous women, um, hashtag MMIW. That has to be one of the most powerful conversions in cross-stitch I have ever seen, like ever. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I don't even have words to describe it. It was just very powerful. 
And then Gary, I saw Gary's finish before for Lady Justice. He converged, he converted her um, to a black woman with rich, beautiful mahogany um, toned skin. And he put her on the fabric for the preamble to the constitution. He showed her on the Sunshine Stitchers, um, this latest episode, fully finished. I had to call my husband in the room. I had to pause it and show it to him. It brought tears to my eyes. Those are two of the most powerful conversions. Like just so moving, just so beautiful. Speaking of conversions. So this one um, is a piece that I started. Let me look at my notes on September 6th, 2017. This is a piece that was already special to me um, because it was the piece that I committed to working on when Caroline from Off the Grid Needle Arts first started the Friday Off the Grid group on Facebook. I said I was gonna work on this every Friday night and make sure that I get um, to put some love in it. That plan failed, um, and we're talking about four years ago. That plan failed. I did not work on it every Friday night. As a matter of fact, I stopped working on it altogether. And then it slowly but surely became my retreat piece, um, the piece that I would take with me to retreats and not work on because I was running my mouth. But this was also the piece that I was working on um, at my very first floss tube, New Jersey floss tube retreat, the second one where I was sitting in between Gerald and sitting next to Caroline, and looking at Emily and her mom and looking at Arlene across the table and Amy was right there. And it was just, there's so many memories in this piece. Um, this was the piece that I worked on at the Stitch Fest retreat with um, uh, Jesse and uh Stephanie and oh goodness so many other people um uh, Melissa and I oh, see your face and your name is escaping me you sat right next to me you sat right next to me I can see you I can see you we laughed together it was the best time anyway this was the infamous stitch fest retreat where there was a Jan Hicks hiding in the bath in the bathroom and it wasn't Jan Hicks and if it was Jan Hex, we were we were about to embarrass her because our whole entire table got excited and we were about to take off running to go meet Jan Hex while she was in the bathroom. Which, you know, is usually frowned upon. But on this particular day, it sounded like a really good idea. Um, and Jan Hex wasn't even there. It was it was another Jan. We just heard Jan and <sighs> Yeah. So yeah, this was also the piece I was working on um, when Ingeborg and Emma came to the following Stitch Fest. It was, anyway, I haven't even showed you the thing yet. Anyway, so this year um, I picked it back up just to work on it and I had an epiphany. Um, like I said, everything was kind of, this was a rough year. It was a rough year on my spirit and my soul. Um, and just the things I was seeing with the hatred and the division, very, lots of anger, lots of anger, lots of, um, disappointment, lots of hurt, all of those feelings. Um, and one of the things that I think we all do, um, is kind of lose ourselves in our stitching and every once in a while we'll get an opportunity to take a piece that we're working on and make it more meaningful um, and more memorable. And one of the things that I decided to do when I picked this up this year, and I don't remember exactly what point, um, if there was anything that really was the catalyst to making this change. It was just something that came to me to do. Um, we all know the Prairie Schooler alphabet where, you know, A is for anchor, B is for, um, blackbird, C is for, uh, cow, D is for drum. I had gotten as far as I had completed the A is for anchor um, block and I was working on B is for blackbird and I was just about to stitch. I don't even think I had stitched 
Blackbird. I don't even think I had stitched is four. Um, but I had definitely already stitched is for anger and I had an idea and it just came to me. Um, where I was going to change the entire alphabet to make it more meaningful to how I was feeling in that moment, in that mo moment, Freudian slip there, um, in that moment and make it something to serve as a reminder um, of change that has yet to come and change that has come. Um, because there has been change, hasn't there? There's been so much movement and visibility. Um, it's been amazing to see. It's been amazing to see. And it's been um, a lot of change that has not arrived. And I think that was one of the more heartbreaking things that we've witnessed this year to see how much hatred has been there still all this time which many of us knew about, um, but it was kind of behind the scenes. It wasn't so much in your face. Um, but the difference is now more people are seeing it. More people are seeing the world as, as um, many people have been seeing it for centuries. And it's bringing about a movement of change. And I'm, I'm grateful I'm here to see it. Um, but that said, I changed my Prairie School Alphabet Sampler. I picked out A is for Anchor and I changed the words. Um, so, so far we have A is for Activism, B is for Black Lives Matter, C is for Civil Rights, D is for Diversity. And in making those changes, It's rejuvenated the appreciation that I have for this pattern and my desire to stitch on it. So once again, I am stitching on this every Friday night for now, because what did Caroline say? Hashtag I plan not to plan in 2021. Um, but for right now, I pulled this out every Friday night for the Friday off the grid party. Um, yeah. And I just kind of make my way through. I stitched on this. I pulled this out to stitch on this while the election was taking place. Um, and said that I would stitch on it until we found out who our new president was. And I did. I also pulled this out for the week of Martin Luther King's birthday, or at least the the holiday, his birthday was that Friday, um, the week of Martin Luther King Day and the inauguration happened, fell within the same week, so I stitched on this all week. Um, yeah, so it's become a, a quite a special piece. Um, and I always think of Jan from Thread Garden when I see it stitched all together because she was the first person that I saw stitch it all in one piece, and that is what I, I intend to do. This is one over one on 28 count um, using the called for DMC. Everything is the same except my letters are not filled in with the red because it was very hard to see. So I keep my letters with the negative space. A um, few people have asked me, it's falling here. A few people have asked me if I have the entire alphabet planned out and I do. Um, one of the things that I have been having a little bit of fun doing is when I post, when I finish a block, I'll ask, usually on Instagram, when I post it, I'll ask do any guesses on what the next letter is. Um, and it's fun seeing what your guesses are. For D, it was interesting. Um, a lot of people said either diversity or democracy, and those were the two Ds that I was struggling with. Um, and I ended up ultimately going with diversity. Um, I am still struggling with Z and Q, um, but for the most part, excuse me, I have the entire alphabet, I'm sorry, I have the hiccups, I have the entire alphabet planned out, and I really appreciate 
all of the positive feedback that I've received on this um, conversion. It, it is very special to me and it's very personal to me, but it's always wonderful when you see how many people appreciate it and appreciate the message um, that you're sharing through your needlework. Um, I just appreciate it. Um, so thank you for all of you that have been so kind as to comment and share your thoughts and, and share your ideas on what um, some of my letters should be. I'm very open to that. Even though some I would be hard pressed to change, I am very open, and open to hearing your idea, ideas, particularly if you have any ideas for Z or Q. Um, and that is it for my active webs. And now on to the whip parade portion. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, I am going to go through each of these 16 drawers in a series of videos. Sometimes depending on how many items are in the drawers, I might do one drawer, I might do two. I don't know, it depends on what's in there. Um, but today I am doing one drawer and there is quite a bit in here and right now we are at 40 minutes so i'm assuming this video is going to be about an hour long um so yeah this is part one of dare i say a 16 part whip parade so thank you in advance for going on this journey with me so what we're going to do is we're going to go through the contents of each drawer we're going to talk about the project bag. We're going to talk about what's in here. Um, and hopefully we can talk about what count and what fabric it's on. Um, and hopefully we won't find too many bags where it's multiple projects in one bag. Because you know how we do sometimes. So this first one, I think this is from a love card from Diana. It is. Diane, I still have your card that you sent me. This is from 11419. I still have it. It may be because I love you. It might be because I'm a hoarder. It's probably a little bit because of both. So in this project bag we have, this is the Seashells Project Bag by So Much to Love. We have... This is me trying to remember the name of it. Opus Magnuson. Yes. Opus Magnuson. I think that's the name of it. And this is our progress on it. This is one over one. I think it's on 25 count. It might be 28 count. But it's definitely one over one. And that is using the called for... Gentle Arts Colors. It is Opus Magnuson. I'm trying to see if I can show you a quick picture of it. Probably not. Talk amongst yourselves. I cannot. But I'll insert a picture of it here. And once again, that's our progress so far. There's the back for those of you that like to see such things. And I don't know if that's 25 or 28 count. I'll have to look that one up. So that was my first clip. And we're also going to be able to tell exactly how many whips does Letitia have once this is all said and done. This is a Mamalee bag made by the lovely Emily from Eclectic Possessions. And I can tell from my handy dandy oh so organized label that this is tapestry started on 12-26-17. Let's see how much progress I have done in three years. Tapestry. This was a bandwagon I jumped on as part of the Off the Grid Needle Arts party. I have one second because I have threads falling. We can't have that. 
Okay, this is Tapestry by Ink Circles. This is stitched, I know it's on Rocky Mountain by XJU Designs. I wanna say it is 40 count. And this is my progress for the past three and a half years because I'm a speedy stitcher like Gary. I don't mess around. I don't mess around. Three and a half years of progress, guys. Look at this gorgeous fabric. This is my favorite fabric, Rocky Mountain by XJU. There's that. There's the back for those that like that. Um, pretty sure it's 40 count. I don't know why. Probably not. It's probably my imagination. It looked like the, the fabric was yellowing a little bit. I also have in here something that Olivia and... Elena sent me, here is the tissue paper and the ribbon that they sent it in. And I tore off the address from the envelope and put it in here. So I have that. If I ever need their address, that's where it is. It's in the Mommelie bag, the Nutcracker Mommelie bag. Look at that colorway, isn't that beautiful? She had this out during a holiday season sale, but it's not the traditional holiday colors, which I totally appreciate. This next one is a beautiful bag from our beloved Caroline, my friend and yours. And I love this bag. Caroline gave me this bag when I met her for the first time in person. We were both having a stitchy date with Gerald. Um, it was just a wonderful, wonderful day. And she brought me this bag with this beautiful fabric. Look at that, isn't that lovely? So what's in here? Oh, I've been seeing a lot. Did you guys just hear? I was like, oh, what was what was that? Um, I've been seeing a lot of this on Instagram lately with Abby Bella Stitch, with Jen from Quirks and Stitches, with Eclectic Possessions. And every time I see it, I'm like, where is mine? Here it is. Peacock, a badger, and a unicorn. Or a peacock, a unicorn, and a badger. I don't know. From Scarlet Letter. I believe I purchased this while I was in New Jersey on retreat. And this is one over one on 25 count. Lugana in bone. I'm trying to think of when I started this, at least two or three years ago. Here's my start. Did a great job. This was a retreat start. And that's all I have to say about that. And there's there's the back. <laughs> so it's funny. And this is exactly why I'm doing this. It's funny because I kept seeing their progress. And I'm like, I want to join in. But I have no idea where it is. Now I know. Put that away. And all the threads are in there. Which is fun. This is fun. I'm seeing what I have. This is another So Much to Love bag. Part of their, I was part of her um, bag of the month club for a while. Pretty little bumblebees. Let's see what's in here. Let's see, we have a hoop. We have a whole bunch of DMC Colorist 4000. Oh. I know what this is. This is, um, yeah. Mermaid, um, Mermaid's Folly. So this came with the bag of the month. A free little, sometimes she sends you little free charts. Not free, but they're included. Pretty sure this was going to be a giveaway. Hip, hip, hooray every day. The little charms. I'm pretty sure that was going to, both of these might have been in here to do as a giveaway. This was, this is on 25 count vintage country mocha. 
one over one and I think this was a restart it is not mermaid's folly I don't know what's going on in this bag this is the beginning of Hawk Run Hollow that I never finished. Don't ask me which one. Villages of Hawk Run Hollow. This is not Mermaid's Folly. But this is, guys, look at this. This is a mess. This is a mess. So now I remember, look at that cool little needle minder. So I started, I restarted Mermaid's Folly on this fabric because I knew I was never going to finish Hawk Run Hollow. And I saved this because I didn't feel like picking it out. I'll pick it out later because one over one on 25 count. And I started Mermaid, restarted Mermaid's Folly over here because I have another Mermaid's Folly somewhere in here that was on 36 count. which I'm gonna pick out. So this is a fun bag and it's got a hoop in it. And this apparently is the floss that I'm using with some floss residue there, there you go. It's like a grayish brown variegated DMC color is 4000. Well, that was an interesting bag. Um, Mermaid's Folly. All right, this is another Evertotes bag. You will probably see a pattern between Garon Toten bags, Evertotes, So Much to Love, and Diana It's Kismet. I love this bag with the little hedgehogs and little lions and beasts in their little sweaters. It, it's ridiculous. This it's excuse me. Berland started one sorry guys 117 2018. Let's see what we have here. What in the world? This says I run on coffee and cross stitch. What am what am I going through here? This is my start from 2018. Wow. It's my start. Don't judge me. Your starts look like this too. Right? And Spirit of Berlin by Long Dog Samplers. This is what it looks like. <laughs> That's what I've gotten done right there. Right there. Yeah. yeah. This apparently is the floss that I wanted to use. This is Verdigris and Cinnamon by Gentle Arts. Apparently, is that what I'm going to do with it? I think it is. Oh, that's pretty. I see where I was going with there. And then, um, yeah. a little Notions pouch that came with it. I'm just going to go ahead and put those threads in there because that's probably where they belong. Well, that's actually a very pretty color combo if I ever get past those like five little triangles. Hmm. So, yeah. Another so much to love bag with some pretty birds. If I were to venture a guess, vintage birds is in here because that looks like the bag that I would put vintage birds in. Yeah. Okay, this is Permans of Copenhagen and Castles in the Air. Okay, I was close. Okay, this is another one of those bags because it says Permanent of Copenhagen and Castles in the Air. And I pulled out a fish. Fanciful fish. Mm -hmm. um, Death by Cross Stitch. I know my death by cross stitch isn't in here, so that must have been a printout. And then Herman of Copenhagen, sampler 1663. Let's 
see what I have in here. I have a whole bunch of cinders in gray and some 28 count Joblin. I believe this is Castles in the Air. This is a hodgepodge bag. What in the world? I have nothing to say about this. I, I don't know. I think I was going to restart Castles in the Air with these MPI silts. I know that's what I was going to do. I was probably going to restart it on this using this as the main color. This silks for you as the main color. I'm done. I have nothing. So that's not even a whip. That's like, it's a restart. I don't know why I put Permanent of Copenhagen on here because I haven't started this. It's just the pattern. I don't know. Say it again. I'm not the only one who has stuff that looks like this. So this is show and tell. This is not judgy time. This is a beautiful bag from Diana. It is Kismet. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And this is, I don't remember the name of it, but I know what it is. This is 36 Count Medina. This was the start, I think, of the linen and thread sampler from 2020. Mm -hmm. This is why I don't do the, this is why I don't do sows guys, because this is what happens. I'm saying that this is what happens with sows, but everything that I've shown so far looks like this. So it's not just sows, it's Letitia. So yeah, it's fine. In there, my daddy's initials, because I remember saying I was going to stitch this and put in the initials of friends and family, loved ones who have passed on. And then I decided I was going to change out that turquoise for a different color. And because I decided I was going to make a change, I haven't touched it since. And in case you were looking, there is a Tunisian crochet hook right there. And this is the beautiful hank of silks for you that I was using. A pair of scissors with a really pretty scissor pop. Yeah. This is the travel bag from Garon Toten Bags. I don't think this was a bag of the month. It might have been from one of their sales that they had. Eh, maybe it was a bag of the month. I don't remember. But this is what I worked on. Oh, I've been looking for this charger. We went to Barcelona earlier in 2020, right before... Um, the pandemic became a pandemic. It was still coronavirus. It wasn't even COVID-19 yet. Um, we were packing up to come back home when the first case was detected in Madrid. And um, actually, we were in Madrid one year. We were in Barcelona one year ago at this very moment. Yeah. Yeah. We were in Barcelona right now. Wow. Um, we came back home just in the nick of time. If we had waited a couple of weeks, we might have been stuck there. Maybe even... Uh, yeah. It, anyway, these are the two projects that I took with me on that trip. This is a... Um, gosh. I don't know. Look at the pattern. Instead of trying to figure it out. This is the peacock tree. 
I'm not going to try to pronounce that because I don't speak French, but I know it means the peacock tree by GGR Designs. And I actually got much further on this than I thought, than it appears. This is my progress. I got much farther on it. I think this is upside down too. But I was stitching it two over two, two over two on 36 count and decided not to. I decided I wanted to do it one over two and I plucked it all out on the plane. Eight hour plane ride home. I spent frogging the whole time. Um, give or take a nod, a nap or two. And then I restarted it. And that is what I stitched on and frogged on on my trip to Barcelona. This was the other project that I stitched on and frogged on in Barcelona. Barcelona. City Silhouette Watercolor Effect. This is an Etsy design. I'm going to get out in black and white, but it's in color. And here is our start. I wanted to make sure that I started this in Barcelona. And I did. And that's all I did. I can't get it together. There we go. And it's a very beautiful colorway. That was a black and white photo that I showed you, but these are the colors. Not fun. So that is in my travel bag from Garon Toten Bags for obvious reasons. So I'm about to sneeze. This bag and these projects have both been abroad. I'm about to sneeze. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. This is another Garon Toten bag. Bag of the month. This was probably April or May or March. It's Easter. Easter time. What's in here? I don't know. But these are the colors. I still don't know, even based on that, I don't know. This is, ah, uh, the 1717 Freeland Sampler. Ah, uh, yes. This is stitched on 46 count, Bristol White. <sighs> Gosh, man, I love that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. 1717 Freeland Sampler. That is my start. Let me see if I can show you what it will look like. That's what it will look like. It's a big one. Yeah. And that is housed in the Garon Toten Bags Funny Bag. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. This is by Evertotes, Caroline's company. Sweaters and then the blue jean bottom bag. I'm sorry, sweaters and then the jeans. It's too much. Sweater weather. That's the last time I'm going to say it. I might say it one more time. And this is, let me see if I remember how Shiloh pronounced it. Sans souci. I don't know, but she sounded like she knew what she was talking about, and I was not pronouncing it this way. So I'm going to say Sans Souci. Please correct me if I'm wrong. My long dog sampler. First video back, and we're already over an hour. And this is on, looks like Rocky Mountain. And there is my start with a little Frankie cat butt. That looks good. That looks great.
Let me get back into this. Um, and I remember showing my progress during Blossomus last year. Uh -oh. I have a ribbon in here. Why do I have a ribbon? I think this is what it came wrapped up in. No, I don't know what that is. Um, oh, more needle minders. Oh, cat's hugging. It's a gray and white cat and a black cat hugging. I have a gray and white cat and a black cat, and they will never, ever hug. Not in this lifetime or the next. So. And there is the thread choice that I'm using on my Friday off the grid. Thread keeper saying my party pants are on. Very nice. And this is, what is this? What thread is this? This is Threadworks Bleeding Hearts, number 1809. That's a good red, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's a good red. Hmm. Why do I have so many scissors in this little... This is the little pouch that came with my bag. Why do I have so many scissors in this pouch? One. Two, three. Why do I have so many scissors? <sighs> Did you miss me? I missed you. I did not put these threads back in with my Friedland sampler guys. This this is how disasters are made. So I'm going to do that right now. I didn't put my pattern back. Talk amongst yourselves. Doing a little damage control. We're down to the last bag. This was definitely the March Toten bag. Look at that shimmery iridescent. I know what's in here. I knew it. Well, looks like we have a couple of things in here. No, I didn't know it. That was wrong. So this, any guesses? Are these colors? Ellen Reed might know. Yes, it is descending order by long dog samplers. On this pea green fabric by, hand dyed fabrics by Stephanie. If I'm not mistaken, I think Danielle Stitcherista sent me this. Pretty sure she did, I don't know, I don't, Remember why? Did I purchase it from her? Or did she send it to me? I don't recall. Somebody sent this to me though. Might have been Emily. No, that's this isn't embarrassing at all. If somebody sends you a gift and you don't remember who sent it to you on a video, it's not awkward. It's great. And that, guys, is the end of my back. Sorry about that, guys. I had to stop and pause and all that good stuff, but now I'm back. Um, so that was the end of my basket. I keep looking over here, but there's no camera over there. So I'll look here. That was the end of my basket. Um, from here, I will be able to rewatch my video and record everything that was in there, along with the location of where the project is, which bag it's in, and I'll be super organized. Um, but there's a lot of things that I need to work on. Did you hear my stomach just now? Yeah, there's a lot of things that I need to work on, including getting some lunch. Um, but yeah, so that was fun. It was interesting seeing the bags that I have with minimal 
minimal progress. This is probably why we have so many whips because we'll start something and something new and shiny will come along, but it's good. It's good to see these things and have them at the forefront of my mind and know um, where they are if I want to work on them and think about them when I go to buy something new. Um, but that's it. That's all we have to share. It's over an hour, well over an hour. Um, thank you guys for being patient with me on my little hiatus. And for those of you that gave me a gentle wink and a nudge to come back, I never left. I think I just took an extended break. That's what we're going to go with. But we have 15 more bins to go through, so more to come. But thank you for sitting with me and for the past seven years, really. Thank you. Um, always fun to share with you guys. Always so much fun to know that I can sit here and record this video and talk to myself. And there will be a bunch of people that will truly enjoy it. Um, so that said, I wish you all well as we continue to navigate through um, this new normal. Um, I wish you all well as we navigate through, um, some of these things that are new to some of us, but not new to all of us and, um, processing that information and trying to make a difference, even if it's our inner, within our own little bubble of the world, that's still making a difference. Um, and being patient with each other as we navigate through this. Um, yeah, that's all I got to say about that. But thank you. Always a pleasure, guys. And until next time, um, yeah, let's be more than kind to each other, right? Let's be a lot more than just kind. I'll see you next time, guys.